all the participants. I welcome you all in the day four, session three of AICT IST sponsored refresher program on applications of artificial intelligence using machine learning and deep learning. In this session three of day four, we are having Dr. Namika Yadav with us. Dr. Namika Yadav obtained her PhD degree in electrical engineering in 2010 from Chhattisgarh Swami Vivekananda Technical University. Uh, she started her professional career as graduate engineer trainee at Bharat Aluminium Company, Korba, CG, where she worked from December 2002 to August 2003. She also has industrial experience as assistant engineer from 2004 to 2009. She joined the National Institute of Technology, NIT Raipur, as assistant professor in the Department of Electrical Engineer. Now, presently, she is working as Associate Professor and also serving as Associate Dean since July 2018. She has been appointed as Editor of IEEE Transactions on Power Delivery. She enlisted in Top 2% Scientists list in year 2021. Recipients of Institution of Engineers India Young Engineers Awards 2015-16, VIFA Young Faculty Award in 2015, the Glory of India Award in 2016, Chhattisgarh Young Engineers Award in 2016. These are the list of awards that MAM has received. MAM has supervised seven PhD theses and 12 master theses. She has also published various papers in the reputed journal, conferences, as well as she wrote the book chapters. She is having more than 2,300 citations and her H index is 26, I10 is 63. So I welcome you, ma'am, in the day four, session three. And ma'am is giving us the session, delivering the session on advanced signal processing techniques and machine learning applications in modern power system. Over to you, ma'am. Uh, I'm very thankful to Professor Rekha Jain, ma'am, for the nice introduction. Uh, can you see the screen, please? Please check this. Yes, ma'am, the screen is there, but uh, yes, ma'am, yes. Now the presentation is also visible. Okay. I have made the slide show. So. Okay, so very good afternoon to all the dignitaries present here and the participants. I am here to present you the topic advanced signal processing techniques and machine learning applications in modern power system. Before coming to my lecture session, I would like to thank the organizing team of this online refresher program organized by the Purnima Institute of Engineering and Technology. Thank you for giving me this chance to share my views and it will be useful for the participants to work ahead for their either MTech or PhD program. So these will be the contents of my presentation. Modern power system, slight introduction to the DGs, microgrid and smart grid terminologies, various key elements that have been done for deployments of the smart grid. And what are the research efforts in modern power system utilizing the advanced signal processing techniques, how the protection challenges posed on the distribution system with integration of DGs, particularly based on renewable energy sources. To cope up these challenges, various protection schemes that can be proposed for microgrid and smart grid, few publications and references. So modern power system is basically more switching towards using of renewable energy sources so as to meet the demand of power 
locally at the distribution level or based on the large generating capacities by either renewable energy sources they can also be integrated at different voltage levels in the power system network the earlier power system was simply a radial feed network which consists of a centralized generation then coming to the transmission the high voltage transmission and then distribution at ehv level or hv level and lv level at lv level basically mostly the household loads are there at hv and ehv levels the loads connected they are either of industrial loads so all these are basically feeding the loads which is the power demand by the consumers now with integration of dgs at different voltage levels the modern power system network is no more a radial network because we have fed the circuit at different levels with the power sources so with this what is basically the system is facing is the protection challenges which initially were the system was a radial system with integration of dgs now the system is no more a radial system it is a meshed system with interconnections of different dgs now the terminology dg particularly refers to the various electrical energy sources that are basically connected to distribution networks because of their low capacity and low volume in production and obviously these dgs are low cost driven as compared to the enormous generators like the thermal power station based or hydel power station or nuclear power stations those generating stations they are of large capacities on the contrary the dgs which are particularly based on renewable energy sources they are having the capacity much lower and these units particularly they are connected at the distribution side to meet the load demand locally and it will give you various advantages particularly the reduction in the environmental pollutions because of the carbon free electrical energy source economic issues to develop a power plant and reduction in losses particularly because transmission losses are reduced as we integrate the dgs at the distribution level directly and with this we can we get an improvement in the voltage profile all along the line and with this we can meet the power demand locally particularly to serve the critical loads so this is a simple system that is being shown here various dgs particularly based on either solar photovoltaic source or various micro turbine dgs or it may be based on fuel cell so overall there will be a micro grid management system which will be controlling all these dgs to serve the various loads either the household loads or the industrial loads which consist of variable speed drives so overall management is particularly done by the distribution automation system and control management system so as i told these dgs can be classified into two types these dgs can be we all were knowing about the diesel generators or the generators based on either natural gas or kerosene so with this basically we directly burn these fuels so with that we get an energy which is finally used to run a turbine so with this they were the dgs which were based on non renewable fuels however we have now mostly all these dgs which were based on non renewable fuels they are now being used in modern days we have switch over towards the renewable energy based dgs so what are various renewable energy renewable energy can be obtained either through wind or solar 
और हाइड्रल बायोमास एंड हाइड्रोजन एनर्जी इस इट कैन आल्सो बी नोन एज फ्यूल सेल सो ऑल दीज आर द टाइप्स ऑफ रिन्यूएबल एनर्जी सोर्सेस व्हिच विल बी फाइनली गिविंग यू अ पावर सोर्स टू पर्टिकुलरली these dgs are run by various types of like wind energy there will be coupled by a wind turbines solar energy these can further be classified into two types solar thermal and solar photovoltaic particularly the rooftop applications and in solar thermal based on temperature the heating capacity because of the solar energy so that is based on solar thermal then in hydro there can be a small hydrogen small hydro electric power stations particularly of the order of either kilowatts to few tens of kilowatts only then based on biomass they can be biomass gasifier or we can also directly burn out the biomass so that is coming under the category of direct combustion and fuel cell based which turns the micro turbines with these dgs we can address various problems experienced by the power system network particularly we can address the high peak load shortage various losses can be reduced the transmission and distribution losses dgs can supply power to different remote and inaccessible areas it is particularly coming under the rajiv gandhi rural electrification scheme wherein earlier the conventional grid was not available so now these dgs can electrify the those villages or the rural areas and these dgs based system they give a faster response to the new power demand and improves the reliability and overall power quality with this we will have the better energy and load management and we can optimally use the existing grid so all these were the advantages or finally the aspects that can be dealt with dgs so as i told based on the generating capacities of these dgs they can be integrated into the power system network at different levels so dgs particularly of capacity less than 10 megawatts they can be integrated into the system more closer to the loads so that is you can say at the distribution level directly more closer to the loads whereas if dgs if they are of capacity greater than 10 megawatts then these dgs are typically connected to the transmission line level and they forms the part of the regular power system with multiple sources because these dgs are based on the inverter technologies dc to ac conversions are involved so because of that certain harmonics will be inserted into the system so it will experience power quality issues because of these inverter based dgs so there will be different areas in which the researchers working particularly in the area of stability and voltage and voltage instability condition to monitor then the protection issues then coming to the power electronics based dgs operation control making it fault tolerant all these are different areas in which the researchers are working now if you compare these two which is the conventional fossil fuel based generations and the renewable power generations so the terminologies uh, there are certain things that i need to uh, focus upon is in fossil fuel based there are concentrated generations available whereas in renewable power generations it is of distributed nature 
these are of high capacity these are of low capacity the conventional technology is already proven whereas still r and d is going on in renewable power generation based dgs also because the conventional whatever power that is being generated as there is very less storage available in which we can store the energy so fuel storage which is more expensive whereas now here with renewable power generations particularly all sources they cannot be stored so load is to be met out directly and that much of generation should be involved so here main aim is to first is to reduce the overall losses in the transmission and distribution system so renewable power generations particularly they are integrated at distribution levels so as to reduce the overall losses with the uh, conventional renew fossil fuel based generations it is of continuous operations but with renewable it is intermittent operation and here fuel is to be available at local whereas in either coal based or nuclear power based they require the transportation of fuel and this causes severe pollution whereas renewable based is carbon free now coming to more deeper to the distributed generations as i told there can be two types electronically interfaced generator based or rotating machine interface generator based dgs can be integrated to the grid using these two types of connections electronic interfaced distributed resource they can be integrated using inverter based dgs that is where conversion from dc to ac that is required whereas in case of rotating machine interface dgs we may either use either induction generators or synchronous generators the interface that are required it can be in case of flywheel if we use that is an inverter based dgs if it is fuel cell that also requires an inverter if it is a micro turbine so you have all seen these micro turbines particularly in the uh, wind based dgs yeah. so there they can be either inverter based interface or it can also use induction generator then if reciprocating engines are there then it can be either synchronous or induction generators small hydro plants they can also use either induction or synchronous generators then if it uh, dgs are of solar photovoltaic type so further interface to the dg uh, power system network will be through inverter superconducting magnetic ultra capacitor or inverter all these requires inverters wind turbine can also be integrated using induction generator now there are basically uh, major issues when you integrate these dgs at the distribution level first is that the major protection issues to interface the network the power quality issues and overall control and operation of these dgs to meet out the particular load demand as these dgs are not available all the time they are of intermittent nature so uh, we need to have a balance between the main utility grid as well as the power supply through these dgs so this with dgs how basically the dgs are integrated directly at the load end you can see these are the various feeders feeder a b c and d and this arrow points out the various loads so these loads are to be fed using a utility as well as using the distributed generators so there will be a point of common coupling between the dgs and the utility grid enna madam padukringa enna neenga ah excuse me ma'am some disturbances there from some participants side please mute, mute them okay so there is an utility grid if it is active then that mode of operation of the system is considered to be grid connected mode 
that time this static switch is closed and all feeders are supplied by the grid and in this the system operates in active as well as reactive power control mode so it is a grid connected mode when the power this particular switch static switch it is closed in which the grid utility grid is connected to the load site as the next mode is islanded mode in which this static switch is open and now this point of common coupling is you can say it is open site and how can this loads will be feed obviously the power that is fed to these loads it will be reduced because utility is no more available with us so this mode is considered to be a islanded mode here utility grid is not supplying any power and the static switch between the utility and the loads with dgs they are this it switch is open and these feeders a b and c only these three feeders are supplied by the these micro sources you can see here this red point these are considered to be the micro sources or the dgs and finally because these sources are only able to fit a reduced load not all the loads connected so because of that few of the feeders are to be disconnected so this feeder d is not supplied any power it is disconnected feeder d is dead and overall in this operation we operate the system in voltage dash frequency control mode so up till now we have considered about one terminology that is the modern power system which consists of dgs now here Uh, another terminology comes which is a microgrid this microgrid can be defined as a decentralized group of electricity sources and loads which normally operates in two modes connected or synchronous mode with the traditional wide area synchronous grid and it can also operate in a islanded mode when it is disconnected with the utility grid and in this mode it can function autonomously as physical or economic condition dictates particularly this is necessary because it will be feeding to the loads but the overall condition to feed that particular load will depend upon the overall capacities of the grid which consist of different dgs which are of availability to that time the like clay solar is available only in the day time similarly the wind is based on the wind speed so they may not give you power for longer duration so to feed a particular loads for 24 hours we may require certain additional storage which can support to the loads during you can say when they are sources are not available so this is a broad overview of microgrid which consists of this is the conventional utility grid and they are connected to the different loads either the residential loads or the industrial loads and these loads are being fed not only by the utility grid but also by different dgs which can be either based on wind micro turbine solar certain energy storage is also required micro turbine generators and different loads like electric vehicles so all that if it is operated in grid connected mode that is when utility is connected or it can also operate in islanded mode so there will be particularly a control management system to operate this micro grid in either the two modes islanded mode or grid connected mode now terminology smart grid as per the electric power research institute smart grid is defined as the one which incorporates the information and communication technology at every aspects of electricity generation its delivery consumption in order to minimize the overall in environmental impact enhance the market improve the reliability and its service and finally to reduce the cost and improve the 
efficiency of the power system network so smart grid basically involves information and communication technologies at different levels of the power system network main aim is to improve the overall efficiency of the system improve the reliability and finally to reduce the cost so smart grid is considered to be a system in which all generation transmission and distribution stations they are connected with communication technology to communicate with either different levels as also to the loads like cities and offices house factories these are your loads electric vehicles all these are your loads and here side they are all your dgs conventional thermal power plants and nuclear power plants based resources so they are conventional sources of generations and then wind solar all this can be integrated when all these are operated to have an exchange of information between the smart grid system using information and communication technology then the system is considered to be a smart grid system so various elements which are deployed in smart grid they are smart field devices and sensors basically to monitor and measure the process and communicate the data back to the operation centers and with this utilities are installing all these digital devices like smart meters phaser measure measurement unit intelligent electronic devices all along the transmission and distribution grids particularly to have the monitoring sensing and control purpose then there will be separate communication network which is required to share the data among the devices and the systems and finally an information management and computing system is there which process synthesize and helps the operator to access apply the data coming from the digital technologies throughout the grid we all have seen in our state electricity part where it various deployments of advanced metering infrastructure is already going on this is particularly to improve the voltage and outage management system and synco phaser technologies are being utilized to have the overall situation awareness of the power system at large and with rapid adoption of various dgs such as photovoltaic wind based dgs biomass or mini and micro hydro power plants all these are increasing the partnership of the private parties which are <coughs> developing these dgs to be integrated to the power system network with a utility grid and they are considered to be the third party merchants <coughs> so up till now um, i am open to the participants if there is any query regarding the information exchanged by me they can write me the query in the chat box i will take it up so various smart grid deployments particularly the advanced metering infrastructures which involves the various smart meters and communication and information technologies that are being deployed and finally an energy management system is there at the utility side and based on various smart home energy controllers and building monitoring systems various consumer based equipments are also being deployed in the smart grid systems with this integration there is an automation control and real time monitoring of all these advanced sensors and with use of the 
intelligent electronic devices and phaser measurement units which are installed at transmission levels at the system we can have the overall protection coordination of the different transmission and distribution feeders finally to regulate the voltage also to control the various parameters at the transmission and distribution levels voltage frequency controls all that can be done main aim is to enhance the overall operational performance of the system and to have the least cost to the consumer of overall energy supply now uh, as main focus of my this lecture today is the use of different advanced signal processing techniques and machine learning applications in the modern power system network so basically uh, main focus is given on the protection issues which can particularly make the system more reliable if the fault is detected as fast and cleared based on the information available so why protection issue so i will be giving you an idea here uh, in a few points first is that if the system is connected in grid connected mode that is when the utility grid is there so the overall power level when the system is connected in utility mode and when it is disconnected with the utility that is it is in operating in islanded mode so these two involves large changes in the power level because whenever the system is subjected to fault utility grid if it is connected in utility grid mode so the enormous generators which are usually connected at the utility grid side they also feeds the fault current so they contribute to that fault current level and high current level is there so overall power level is very large in utility grid connected mode operation whereas if it is islanded mode so the power level is quite less fault current contribution in islanded mode it also depends on the type of dgs that are connected to the system if it is inverter based dgs then fault current is twice the inverter rated current whereas if it is synchronous or induction based dgs then the fault current is around 4 to 10 times the current so this because of this the overall system protection issues is very challenging also the system behavior it depends of number of dgs that are in operation it may happen that if there are n number of dgs connected in the system so may not all available at a time or may not be in operation at a time so based on number of dgs in operation the system behavior will be changing also as i we are told that the system is no more radial system with integration of dgs now the system is bi directional power flow is taking place into the system so the conventional protection schemes which are earlier based on simple over current protection that cannot be employed and it will face loss of coordination with the different overcurrent relays and major impact of high impedance fault particularly at the distribution lines that is the major fact which is being experienced by the conventional overcurrent protection it is unable to detect such type of high impedance fault due to the current involvement in high impedance fault is almost near to the nominal value so it remains undetected for many hours to a day and it may prove hazardous to the human life whomsoever if they comes in contact with the feeder which is experiencing a high impedance fault and there can be certain nuisance tripping and unplanned islanding events can also occur what is islanding islanding is a phenomena in which the utility grid is disconnected with the rest so this what i can say with the micro grid and we need to operate the system to feed the loads with the available generation capacities of the dg only so it will be feeding a 
lower amount of loads not as compared to the loads that were connected with utility grid also now uh, in different years from 19th century to 21st century there had been various evolvements in the technologies of the protection various particularly the new development if i talk about which consists of wide area based integrated transient and cloud big data based energy all these developments which involves the use of communication and information technology they are getting more and more interest of the relay manufacturers to develop the power system protective relay with the advent of computer in 1970 conventional protection schemes all these were employed with the invent of gps in 1990 the protective schemes like adaptive and traveling wave based schemes and ai based schemes have evolved and now with integration of the wide area network using the communication and information technology the fisher measurement unit intelligent electronic devices all this has given a greater and broader aspect to the protection of the power system network another terminology is micro phaser measurement unit micro pmus particularly they are the phaser measurement units which are util, uh, you can say utilized or connected at the distribution levels because of their low voltage they value uh, the name is micro pmu the pmus which are installed at the uh, transmission levels they are of high voltage capacity whereas at distribution level the terminology uses micro pmu and these are having reduced cost as compared to the pmus which are installed in the transmission system micro pmus can be connected at voltage levels of the distribution system and it is up to rating 690 volts to 400 volts and you can see pmus particularly they are installed at different levels in the distribution systems to overall monitor the parameters at the different levels in the distribution systems whereas in case of transmission systems they are installed at different substations you can say now coming on to applications of advanced signal processing tool so here the main protection issue that is being taken into account in case of distribution system is detection of the high impedance fault so an an active distribution system consists of a system in which the dgs are connected there which is of either renewable energy based sources or the conventional utility grid as well so here we will be discussing about the high impedance fault and its nature usually an high impedance fault is occurred and that can be simulated in power system analysis software by employing this type of model which consists of the anti parallel diode and a variable resistors and the dc voltage of the opposite polarity connected whenever this switch is closed and it is the line will experience an high impedance fault due to the high impedance fault actually there is a large variation in the current you can see the nature of current that changes the overall nature is quite dissimilar like this is the overall behavior 
in which it involves intermittence that is changes in the magnitude at different level asymmetry that is it is not symmetric with respect to positive and negative half of the ac waveform then there is a build up in the system current magnitude we, it will experiencing a build up so overall the fault current experienced during a high impedance fault it exhibit large changes and due to this the magnitude is compared to the normal nominal current is comparable so due to that the conventional overcurrent relay is unable to detect this particular type of fault so here we have considered here we have considered a measurement of this current in case of high impedance fault as well as low impedance fault and then detection of such high impedance fault whether it has occurred at what instant and to differentiate this high impedance fault with the different non faulty switching events like switching of a capacitor switching of a load switching of a dg all these phenomena they can be considered but to be a faulty by the conventional system whereas they must they are not a non they are not a faulty events but rather a switching events so the system which is a protective system it must not consider these types of situation as faulty so here we see that you can see from the waveform in case of harmonic load switching at this point the current magnitude or changes as compared to the non faulty point it is not very drastic change so conventional relaying scheme will not be able to identify such things but low impedance fault can be easily identified by the conventional overcurrent relays but the hif fault high impedance fault it is undetected by the conventional overcurrent relay and due to various switching events you can see when the capacitor is switched there is sudden rise in the current for a short duration a spike is there similarly for transformer energization there is a sudden rise so if this rise is comparable to but the pickup current of the conventional over current relay so in this case also it will consider the system to be faulty so that must not be there so here what we will be doing we will be using a advanced signal processing tool known as variational mode decomposition scheme vmd and we will be using a machine learning technique which is support vector machine to finally classify the presence of fault and discriminate it with respect to the different switching events so that is the main highlight we have considered a modern ieee 13 bus system this is the ieee 13 bus test node feeder system which consists of utility grids and the renewable energy sources based on wind and uh, pvs that is solar based certain battery energy storage systems are also there and conventional dg based diesel generator based dg is also there so there are total four dgs that are connected here and it is connected to the uh, this microgrid is connected to the utility grid at this point of common coupling which is the 650 so this is considered to be the relaying bus at this point the currents and voltages are measured to detect the presence of hif fault and also to discriminate the switching events from the faulty events so now coming on to the basic of the signal processing technique that is the variational mode decomposition that we have used along with singular value decomposition so in vmd the signal yt it is decomposed into different analytical functions known as intrinsic mode functions these intrinsic mode functions are further utilized into the system by calculating its single value decomposition and here only first intrinsic mode functions has been used 
using VMD and then its single value decomposition is computed, which is used and it will be basically a diagonal matrix. It is used as input to the support vector machine based classifier. So you will see it here. How does the system processing techniques work upon? This is the current signal captured by creating a harmonic load switching at instant point 05 and then initiating a low impedance fault of triple line to ground type at point 1. So here you can see if it is an harmonic load switching, so the current signal that consists of certain distortion. Okay. And then at point 1 second, fault has been initiated. So when you apply the signal processing technique, that is VMD, it, it decomposes the system into three functions, first, second, and third intrinsic mode functions. So from first mode function, second, and third. So third is actually capturing the high frequency components and IMF1 is giving you the low frequency component present in the current signals. So from first IMF1, we have calculated its single value decomposition. So when we apply SF, SVD to the VMD, that is the first intrinsic mode function, so you can see from here, this signal is now like this. At point one instant, there is sudden rise in the single value decomposed value of the signal processing signal, which is quite evident because at this instant fault has occurred. So this feature, which is very useful to be taken as input to the support vector machine based classifier to finally detect the presence of fault. So if it is a low impedance fault, you can see the value or the range of the feature vector is between zero to 50, okay? So it gives a clear discrimination between them. Now, employing a machine learning technique, here we have used a support vector machine. How does it work? Basically, support vector machine maps the original input space. Like here, these are the patterns. Okay, so these patterns are being classified into two different classes using an optimal separating hyperplane by having a separation between these two plane such that it can classify the pattern into two different class. So the hyperplane is given by the terminology W transpose X plus B, it is equal to minus one, where X is the input patterns. So this particular classification problem, it is classified using radial basis functions and various kernel functions are also available there. But particularly in this case, we have used RBF kernel functions, which exhibit uh, hyperparameters and reduced numerical calculations and proper boundedness. Three parameter, uh, these two parameters are only to be identified in case of RBF, that is the C penalty factor and K uh, kernel parameter known as gamma. So it is to be calculated for optimizing the hyperplane range. Here it is chosen to be 100 and 0 0.0.2. Now to uh, any of the machine learning algorithm, how does it work? It works based on examples. To give the examples or the patterns, we need to generate the various faulty patterns from the power system network. So first thing is that we must know that how the system will work. It works in two modes, either it in a grid connected mode or in islanded mode. So all those operating conditions need to be identified and then it can experience various low impedance fault, various high impedance fault or different switching events. So all these are to be taken into account while designing the training data set the machine. So you can see here we have uh, for the various low impedance fault, we have taken fault, where is the fault location at 25, 50 and 75% of the line length. 
and there are total 10 sections in the microgrid network 10 line sections in all line sections we have taken different types of low impedance fault with fault resistance value varying between only 0 to 40 ohms in case of high impedance fault again same locations but here now the hif mod the high impedance fault and during high impedance fault we have also varied the dg parameters that is variation in the solar irradiance experienced by the solar photovoltaic cell then variation in the wind speed experienced by the wind wave dgs so these parameters have been changed then finally the switching events which are considered to be non faulty events or normal operating conditions like load switching any loads can be switched in or out that is it can be either connected to the system or disconnected from the system so uh, that load can be either linear load or harmonic load or motor load all these loads are to be considered then uh, because the distribution system may experience the low voltage issues so capacitor is required to support the reactive power and overall voltage profile so capacitor switching can be done then feeder energization feeder particularly can be energized using a transformer circuit so whenever a transformer is connected so inrush current is there because of that inrush current the system will may not consider it to be a faulty condition so that is another switching event then dg switching as these dgs are intermittent in nature so they may switch in or switch out based on the availability of the power that is either solar or wind power so dg switching is also another switching event and transformer energization feeder and transformer energization any feeder is connected as well as similarly a transformer is energized so all these events are switching events once you get the data set generation of all these events which is the intrinsic first intrinsic mode functions its svd value of the current signal only so that is considered as input so overall this is the block diagram of the proposed methodology you can see we apply extracted the current signal at the relaying bus apply the variational mode decomposition scheme and then calculated its single value decomposed this signal if this feature vector is greater than a fixed value that is a threshold of 5 per unit then it is considered to be a low impedance fault but if it is less than 5 per unit then it may be a high impedance fault to get the high impedance fault we have utilized the support vector machine because looking to the uh, simple current signal the no one can identify the presence of high impedance fault into the system so that can be done using a machine learning based technique here we have used svm the same input features has been utilized here to detect whether hif is for present or not so svm is trained to detect the hif fault and also to discriminate it with the switching event if hif is detected so trip signal is issued or if hif is not detected then it is also checked whether it is a switching event or a non faulty event so if it is non faulty event so we may go back to the original point and no trip signal is issued so in this way the proposed methodology works now coming on to the result section we have checked the performance of this scheme using a low impedance fault so you can see earlier the current up till this point is normal operating condition at this point it has experienced the low impedance fault so with this you can see this is your feature vector input feature vector up till this point 1.2 is the point 12 is the instant at which the fault has occurred so at this point when it is experiencing the fault 
the feature vector that is selected using BMD and SVD that rises and if it is above 5 per unit so it is considered to be a fault so low trip signal has been issued to the circuit breaker now coming to a high impedance fault as i told that the current signal looking to the current signal operator cannot justify the presence of fault hif fault you can see nobody can understood whether fault is there or not only looking to the current signal but the proposed signal processing technique based on bmd and svd you can see here up till this point the svd signal is around 3.2 value but at this instant fault has occurred so after that it magnitude rises so we can see that there is clear discrimination between non faulty and faulty part so with this Support vector machine takes certain time to detect the presence of fault and it detects the presence of fault at using SVM and trip signal is issued at this point. So proposed VMD and SVD based scheme along with SVM is clearly able to identify the high impedance fault. Now HIF fault if is present along with variation of DG parameters. What is parameter DG parameter? We have varied the solar irradiance value from 7000 watt per meter square to sorry from 1000 watt per meter square to 700 watt per meter square. We have reduced it. In the second case, we have reduced the wind speed from 15 meter per second to 7 meter per second. So in these situations, how does second and third B and C? And in first case, DGs are operating at its normal point. So even if the support vector machine is able to identify the high impedance fault along with variation in DG parameters. Now, as I... Uh, there are various switching events. What should be the performance of the system? We all know that switching events are the events which are to be considered by the relaying scheme as non faulty. No trip signal should be issued. So here you can see that at this point we have switched in the harmonic load and there is slight increase in the current. And here we have switched in the DGs. So with switching of this point, we can see the feature vector is less than 5 per unit. So if it is less than 5 per unit, no trip signal is issued. Similarly here, if it is less than 5 per unit, no trip signal is issued. So DG switching or harmonic load switching, they are not get affecting the performance of the proposed scheme. You can see the rating of the load that has been switched in. It is 300 kilowatt and 80 kilowatt ampere reactive and DG that has been switched in is DG1. Now capacitor switching at this point there is a notch in the current signals which indicates that there is a switching event occurred. It's a capacitor switching and you can see like this so it is less than 5 per unit so it is categorized as non-faulty. No trip signal is issued. Similarly when transformer is energized this is the point when transformer has been energized. So after few cycles that Particularly when transformer is energized, it experiences harmonic current in the signal. And because of that, this VMD SVD is experiencing distortion. But that distortion is less than 5 per unit. Because of that, no trip signal is issued by the support vector machine. Now, another condition is reverse power flow. If the power flow direction is reversed. It happens to the system whenever the utility grid is disconnected and system operates in islanded mode. So here you can see that from test system to utility, that is the condition of inverse power flow. Usually power flows from utility to the test system. Power is contributed by the utility grid to the test system and feed through the load. Whereas if it happens opposite to that, 
So how to simulate it? Here we simulate it by creating an LG fault behind the red green was here. Now it has reversed to uh, just opposite sides because of that the feature vector is also having distortion, but that distortion is lower than the threshold set, causing no trip signal to be issued. So this reverse power flow condition is also considered to be non-faulty. Now next case is to check which of the uh, yeah, machine learning based scheme will be beneficial for the proposed scheme. So here we have uh, compared the scheme performance by artificial neural network, probabilistic neural network, and then with the support vector machine. And uh, various statistical parameters that have been studied are accuracy, dependability, security, safety, and sensibility. You can see that the support vector machine outperforms over ANN and PNN as it gives high accuracy and all parameters near more than 98%. And also the performance of the scheme is being identified in presence of noise by adding white Gaussian noise to the current signals with different SNF 2 dB, 50 dB we have added all these three and low impedance fault, high impedance fault switching events and overall accuracy that is shown in this graph. So it is Ma'am, you are not audible. Ha, huh, ma'am, uh, that's what I was saying. In between, there was certain noise. Some noise was coming. Okay, okay, ma'am. So finally, coming to the summary of this particular uh, signal processing based machine, as well as machine learning based protection scheme employed for detection of high impedance fault. Here improved solution using VMD and SVM has been presented to detect the presence of high impedance fault and also to distinguish various switching events that may occur in the distribution lines in presence of different DTs. So clearly the proposed methodology discriminates the fault events from the different switching events and the offered accuracy is greater than 99%. And the response time to detect the low impedance fault is within one cycle, whereas in case of high impedance fault is 116.67 milliseconds. And also the validation of the performance of this scheme in real time has been achieved using Opal RT digital simulator, so which confirms its practical applications in real time in the field. Now moving on to the second type of uh, signal processing scheme along with DGs. Here we have designed an intelligent fault detection and classification scheme for distribution lines integration with DGs using Tiger Energy Operator. What is Tiger Energy Operator? It's basically a signal processing scheme in which the signal at is monitored using the expression, which is a second order differential equation, simple. Xt is given as 
dx by dt whole square minus xt into d2 xt by dt square. So second order derivative is calculated here. So in discrete form, this particular expression can be written like this. So where n plus 1, n minus 1, and n, they represent the sampled value of the either current signal or voltage signal that is taken as input. So here it is the present, previous, and next sample to get the teaser energy value of the current signal. So with using three samples, previous, current, and next sample, we can calculate the teaser energy value using TEO. And here we have taken a simple test system which consists of utility grid and two DGs connected which are feeding the three loads L1, L2 and L3 through distribution line 1 and distribution line 2 using transformer TR2, TR3 and TR1 is the utility grid transformer. This is the point of common coupling. Here again HIF model which consists of the variable resistors, nonlinear resistors which are here simulated in different period of time, the value of RP and RN is increased and decreased in nature to give you the asymmetrical behavior in the current that will be experienced by the system when an HIF fault occurs in actually. High impedance fault may occur into the system whenever the distribution line conductors may fall either to a, a high impedance fault path to either the tree fault branch touches to the conductor or the feeder falls to the faulty path which is of high impedance in nature like uh, on roads with asphalt, uh, dama road, all that which gives you the nature of high impedance fault wherein the current magnitude is comparable to the nominal load currents and it is not able to be identified by the conventional overcurrent protection scheme employed for the distribution lines. So here we will be using a signal processing techniques known as teacher energy operation. We use the current signals, process it by TEO, calculate the standard deviation of this TEO coefficient for a moving sample window of half cycle, that is only 10 samples. Then we apply a fuzzy inference system. Here we employ the fuzzy logic based artificial intelligence techniques to detect the presence of fault. So FIS1 is designed to detect whether the fault is present or not, whether it is a normal shunt fault. Normal shunt fault, you can say that uh, other than the HIF fault, it is considered to be a nominal shunt fault. If yes, so it further goes to identify which of the three phases of the distribution system is faulty and whether ground is involved into the system or not so that they can classify the overall 10 types of fault in the system. If the normal shunt fault is not detected then another FIS is designed to detect whether the HIF fault is present in the system or not. If HIF fault is detected again fault is classified. If no fault is there so we move on to the start point. Now here additional thing that we used to measure is the involvement of ground in the fault loop or not. To confirm the involvement of ground, we use the zero sequence current component which confirms the presence of ground faults. If ground faults are there, so it gives you an output G equals to 1 which is clubbed with the presence of faulty phase to classify the fault as either LG LLG or phase to phase or three phase type of fault. Now, how to design a fuzzy inference system? So, in case of a fuzzy inference system, we must distribute the current signal into different operating ranges like if the current is in low range, then it should it confirms that the system is operating in normal condition. Whenever the system is subjected to fault, current rises. So if current is in high range, then it con confirms that the 
fault has occurred into the system and trip signals must be issued now another range of current is decided here as medium this is the medium current range wherein again trip signal is considered to be low which gives you the condition whenever the system is subjected to certain overloading conditions because of overloading conditions the current may rise to a certain value which is not to be considered as faulty so because of that trip signal is not issued either in low or medium range of the current and it is issued only in high range of the current okay now here what we need to uh, do is that uh, if the system is subjected to normal shunt fault that is the low imp low impedance fault or normal shunt faults then the current magnitude is somewhat higher as compared to when the system is subjected to high impedance fault so we need to design two separate fuzzy inference system system for the two operating conditions either normal shunt fault or high impedance fault so you can see here that in case of normal shunt fault the current rises up to 3 per unit in the present test case that we have selected whereas in case of high impedance fault the current magnitude is you can see it is in order of maximum 5 into 10 is to minus 3 per unit so because of this two separate fuzzy inference systems has been designed to take care the two conditions separately when the current is in nominal range no trip signal is issued when current is in higher range then the current signal trip signal is being issued similarly the case with the high impedance fault so how to decide it we need to uh, simulate two extreme conditions into the power system to get this operating range first is uh, for nominal operating conditions that is the uh, no load of, no fault conditions normal operating conditions with the connected load so that gives you the maximum current range in the normal operating conditions which can be decided here then when the system is subjected to a low impedance fault at near to the bus end the relaying bus se bilkul pass mein when you connect a fault at near to the source end so maximum fault current will be measured at the relaying point so that gives you the highest range of the fault current whereas in high impedance fault it will not give you the highest range it will give you the minimum range so uh, because of that low impedance fault is created at the source end to get the maximum range of the current and to get the minimum range of fault current fault is created at the remote end with high impedance remote end with high impedance because that is also to be detected by the system to be as faulty If, because it is an high impedance fault which has occurred at the near to the remote end so these two extreme conditions are to be simulated to get the value of the minimum and the maximum fault current that can occur and then the normal current and accordingly the range in the fuzzy system is designed wherein the here we have chosen the triangular membership functions for fuzzifying the input variables as well as the output variable that is the trip signal it is also used as the triangular membership function to fuzzify it later on defuzzification methods are used to defuzzify the fuzzy output signal and here the defuzzification method used is centroid function here you can see the trip signal for ground fault detection whether ground is present in the system we use the current zero sequence current for this if zero sequence current is in the range between the, uh, less than 0.5 so it is uh, no ground fault condition and it is more than that then ground fault has occurred so uh, in case of normal shunt fault zero sequence current is up to 3 per unit whereas in case of high impedance fault zero sequence current is in only the range of 0.02 per unit so separate fuzzy inference system is designed to detect the presence of low impedance fault or uh, hif fault particularly the ground parameter now coming once the designing part of fuzzy inference system is over now we need to and evaluate the performance of the scheme for different faulty events so we have created here a uh, ag fault at 2.6 seconds this is the instant when fault has occurred and it's an ag fault 
and it is at a distance one kilometer from the relaying bus that is bus one. So it is very near to the source end, and it's an AG fault. So from the current signals, you can see the current signal does not give you much information directly. But if you apply this particular signal processing technique, which is the Tiger energy coefficient, so Tiger energy coefficient when you calculate, you can see that the particular faulty phase, that is the A phase of the three phase system, red phase, that is giving you a clear discrimination. But if you uh, compare it with, with, with the non faulty phases, so at some times it overlaps onto that, at some times it is having clear discrimination. So, what you need to do to get further clear discrimination, we have calculated its standard deviation. So when you calculate the standard deviation, you can see here that up till 2.6, the standard deviated value of the teacher energy coefficient is quite less before the inception of fault. And as in AG fault is incepted, the SD coefficient of faulty phase only is high. And whereas non-faulty phases is having the lower value. So this gives you a clear discrimination of presence of fault in that particular phase. So fault can be classified here correctly. Presence of fault can be directly detected from here. This is given as input to the fuzzy inference system. If the current is in this range, faulty detection of fault is done using FIS. And you can see here when fault is incepted at 2.6, it is detected at 2.607 that is 7 milliseconds has been taken by the fuzzy inference system to detect the presence of fault. Now similarly to calculate the uh, to find out which of the fault type has occurred or which particular phase is faulty you can see here uh, faulty based classifier is there for the three phase system A, B, C the three phases and G that is the ground. So here you can see that after 2.60 second a phase goes right similarly ground rises at three after three milliseconds so it confirms the presence of a to g type of fault in the system so in this way fuzzy infant system detects and classifies the fault another here what we have done we have calculated the Fault is created at the same instant 2.6, but at 24 kilometer. And here the bus currents of bus 1, bus 2, bus 3, that is the three feeders that are there. All three has been shown and its teacher energy coefficients are also shown as it's a three phase fault. So teacher energy coefficient of all three phases are clearly rising from its no, non faulty value and it energy sd value is also having clear discrimination and then finally the trip signal is issued also the fault is classified correctly as three phase fault by the proposed fuzzy based fault classifier so it this covers the final uh, summary now herein we have presented a fault detection and faulty phase identification scheme for distribution lines integrated with DGs using fuzzy inference system. The faulty features has been extracted using teacher energy operators. This TO requires only three samples, successive samples for computation of the energy coefficients. And because of this, it offers very less computation burden. And from the test result, we can see that faulty phase as well as the ground can be detected in very less time. And TO energy coefficient gives clear distinctive characteristic features for discriminating the faulty and non faulty part and overall response time offered by the scheme is quarter to one cycle so under wide variations of parameters in faulty as well as system parameters. So ma'am now I am open to the participants for any query yes participants you may ask if you are having any query
you may also write into the chat window also and you can unmute yourself and ask the query Uh, Ma'am, do I have some more times to cover another uh, topic or? Uh, ma'am, the session. Hi, yes, ma'am. Session is up till three thirty, no? Ma'am, up till three fifteen, because 3:15. now the exam time is there. Okay. okay. Ma'am, but if you want, then I no, don't have any. No, because of that. No, no, oh, no problem. I, I I have finished my work, so I would like to only show uh, few of the references then. Uh, these are few of the publications that I can be referred by you. It has been done by my PhD scholar uh, Poka Krishna Chaitanya, uh, who has recently graduated and received the degree in 2021, December 2021. And these are few of the references. This is the my Scopus profile and uh, Google Scholar profile where you can refer. Now, please, participants, uh, any query from your side, I will be happy to answer. Please, uh, it will be useful for you all. Ma'am, I request you to uh, share your mail ID if participants are having any query in future. So they yes, may yes. meet you. Yes, this is the email ID. You can take it. Note it down, please. Usually participants are of uh, postgraduate or? Uh, ma'am, those are faculty, faculty members. Faculty ma members. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes, ma okay. So probably it will be useful for them to yes, guide for the future PhD yes, work. Surely, ma'am, it will be helpful for them. So in case I will be sharing the slides, no, uh, ma'am, to you. You can then further. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I will share with the participants. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Mm -hmm. Any queries in the chat box? I couldn't see. Is there anyone? No, ma'am. There is uh, no query. One of the participants is saying, ma'am, we are having no query. Okay. No queries there. So, um, thank you so much, Namika, ma'am, for giving a wonderful and knowledgeable session. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Can I leave, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am. You can. Okay, okay. An announcement for the participants is that I'm sharing the link for the exam. Just wait. Yes, I have shared the link onto the chat window that is for the day four quiz session. You all are required to uh, fill this, complete this quiz. And you all may leave this uh, meeting now and complete the quiz session.